Hi everyone, the purpose of this video is to show you how to create a Google Cloud function using TypeScript and the Yarn Package Manager. Google's documentation is great if you want to use JavaScript and NPM. There's a great tutorial showing you how to get started. And the information is there if you want to use TypeScript and Yarn. It's just not really all gathered uh, together in a, in a single place and it's always not totally clear what you need to do. So I'm hoping you'll find this uh, video useful if you want to use uh, TypeScript and Yarn to create a Google Cloud function and hopefully it will save you uh, some time. So I'm just going to walk through a simple demo here. We're starting with uh, an empty project folder and in order to complete this demo, you're obviously going to need um, the Yarn Package Manager, you're going to need Node, and you're going to need the G Cloud uh, CLI command line tool. So I'm going to start in this empty uh, project directory, and I'm going to use the Yarn init command to initialize the project. And then the second thing we are going to do are add the required packages. So we'll need the functions framework uh, package for writing uh, cloud functions. And we'll also need the TypeScript package because we want to write the function in TypeScript. So we'll go ahead and install those dependencies. And um, the functions framework package we'll add as a main dependency dependency and we'll add TypeScript as a dev dependency. So we'll go ahead and add those to the project. And the next thing we're going to want to do is create the tsconfig.json file because we're going to have to make some changes uh, to that. Not really easy to run the um, TypeScript compiler directly from the command line here. So I'm just going to add a script into the package.json uh, file so that we can uh, run that. So we'll open up the package.json file. And what we're going to do is we will add a script uh, that will simply run the TSC init uh, command. <clears throat> And so I've just created this script. I've called it tsconfig, and it's just going to run tsc in it so we can get that um, file to work with. So we'll go ahead and save the changes to the package JSON file and go ahead and run that. And so now we have a default uh, tsconfig uh, file. And we're going to make a couple of changes to the defaults in this file. So let me just open that up in the editor. And the first thing we're going to change is the uh, root dir uh, property. So the root dir property, this is where the TypeScript compiler starts looking for TypeScript files to compile. And by default, it's the, uh, the root directory of the project. What I want to do is uh, separate out all the TypeScript files into their own uh, folder. And so we're going to change this from uh, the root directory of the project to the source directory of the project. So all the TypeScript files for the project will be contained in the uh, source uh, subdirectory. And then the second thing we are going to change is uh, where it's going to put all the compiled JavaScript uh, files. And again, by default, I think those end up in the root folder of the project. And likewise, just to keep these separated out, I am going to place them in the lib folder. So the source files are in the SRC folder and the compiled TypeScript or the generated JavaScript is placed in the lib folder. And we'll go ahead and save those changes. The next thing we are going to do is create the cloud function itself written in uh, TypeScript. And so let us add a new file here. And it's going to go in the source folder and we will call it index.ts. And I'll just copy and paste the boilerplate code for that. Go ahead and save it. <clears throat> so this is a really simple cloud function in uh, TypeScript. We bring in the HTTP function type 
uh, from the functions framework uh, package. And then we create our hello function, that's that HTTP function type, with the uh, request and response uh, parameters, and we send out uh, the response. So the simplest, uh, simplest um, uh, cloud function that we can write in TypeScript. One other optional uh, thing that you might like to do here, you'll notice uh, that I'm using Visual Studio Code and it's highlighting the functions framework packages and uh, the request and response parameters and uh, yeah, can't, uh, can't find the module uh, functions framework and for the request and response, um, we haven't given it a type. So uh, what we are going to do is just add the Visual Studio uh, SDK uh, to the package configuration. And so that will get rid of the, uh, the error highlighting. And the, uh, the command for that is, um, it's just a yarn command. <clears throat> and it uses the DLX subcommand and the yarn package SDKs and the one specifically for uh, VS Code. So we will bring those in as well. And so now hopefully if I return to the editor, um, you'll notice it, uh, it picks up um, those, those SDKs and I'll just click on allow and then the, uh, and then the error uh, messages go away. Uh, so you can do that if you're using Visual Studio Code. Okay, so we've, uh, we've written the function, we've added the packages. The next thing we're gonna do is test this uh, locally. In order to do that though, we're gonna to have to add a couple of more scripts uh, to the package.json uh, file. We're gonna need one to do the build step, so to compile the TypeScript into JavaScript. And then the second uh, script is going to run the functions framework itself. Uh, so I'll add the script for building and we are gonna call this GCP uh, build. And you may be wondering why we just don't uh, call this uh, build. And the reason is this is, uh, again, one of those quirks that are specific to uh, deploying um, Google Cloud functions that are written in TypeScript using the package uh, manager. The documentation really reads like you should just be able to have a build script and, um, and run whatever command uh, that you need to run. But for whatever reason, there is uh, there seems to be this little uh, quirk associated with using the Yarn uh, package manager, and it does not pick up uh, the build script uh, for whatever reason. But in the documentation, it does also talk about using this uh, this GCP build script, which uh, when you're configuring uh, and using the Yarn package manager, it does seem to pick this up, and uh, and so that seems to be what we need to do in order to get this to work when we get to the deploy phase. This isn't particularly important for running locally, but you will find when you go to deploy the function that it's really uh, a lot more picky about what the, what the script is called. So we're gonna call it GCP build, and the only thing we're gonna do is run the TypeScript uh, compiler. And then the second thing we need to have is a uh, script to run the compiled function using the functions framework. And so we will create a start script and we will run the functions framework and with the target flag, hello. And so hello here, that just matches the name of the function uh, in the TypeScript file that we created. And we should specify a port where it's gonna run on. So I'm gonna run this on port 8081. And I think pretty much you can use any port you uh, want here. And I think when you go to deploy, it's smart enough to identify which port you specified and to, to route the requests uh, accordingly. So I think you have a fair amount of flexibility uh, there. But certainly, you definitely have to identify the correct name of the function um, that you created, and you should also specify a uh, port. So those are the only uh, scripts we need. 
The other change we are going to have to make here is to identify where the um, uh, first script is that we need to run. By default, um, it's going to look for a script in the uh, root uh, folder, root directory of the package called index.js. Because we've combi compiled everything into the lib subfolder, we will need to explicitly identify uh, where the starting uh, script is. So we will add a main property here and we will identify that the starting script is in the lib subfolder in index.js. And uh, that should be pretty much it for the changes that we need to make to the package.json file, at least to run it uh, locally. So we'll go ahead and save that, go back to the command prompt, and we should be able to build. So yarn gcp build. And then we can run the um, uh, project. So yarn start. And it goes off. It's running on the port that we specified. And we should be able to test that in the browser. And it was on port 8081. And there we have it. Not very exciting, but uh, it's, uh, it's running. OK, let's go back to the command prompt and stop that. And then the final thing we need to do now is to deploy it to uh, Google Cloud Functions. And we are going to have to make one more change here uh, to the package.json uh, file. And let's uh, let me get back to the editor. And the one extra wrinkle uh, that you're going to need here is to clearly identify which version of Yarn uh, is required to, to build everything. So locally, I've got version uh, 3.6.0 of Yarn installed. When you go to deploy the Google Cloud uh, function, by default, it will use Yarn Classic, like a much older version of, uh, of Yarn. And of course, that won't work in this case. So I've been developing using Yarn 3.6. Um, by default, Google Cloud Functions is going to try and build and use using uh, a classic or an older version of, uh, of Yarn. And so we really have to clearly identify uh, the version of Yarn that's required. And in this case, you can kind of see when I ran Yarn in it, it created the, the package manager uh, property, but that is not enough. Uh, the, the Google Cloud Functions is going to be looking for a really specific uh, property to identify uh, the version of, of Yarn that's required. And what we need to do is uh, for the engines property, we need to identify the version of Yarn. So the extra uh, bit of configuration we need here is uh, this. And, um, and that's really what we need uh, in order for the deployment uh, to work. And again, this is, I'm just going to save this before I forget. This uh, is explained in the documentation for uh, Google Cloud Functions. However, the problem is it's not really uh, at, the, at the top of the list. So this information about setting uh, the engine is contained here. So it does kind of buried in the uh, reference documentation with respect uh, for Node. It does talk about using NPM, using R, Yarn, using PN, uh, PM. Um, and it notes that you need the Yarn lock file. And I mean, it says you can specify. You really do need to specify uh, the version of, uh, of Yarn you want to use using the engines Yarn property uh, or the engines Yarn field in the package uh, dot, dot, dot JSON file. The other information with respect to, I know I kind of uh, glossed over it. I talked about having to create uh, the GCP build. Uh, script. That information is uh, contained in the documentation as well. It talks about it here. 
it's really it's not really specific to yarn is talking about npm and it's talking about you know there being a build script and you would kind of also think that you could just have a build script in yarn as well and it talks about also using a gcp uh, build script it kind of reads like you can uh, use either and the build script does work if you're using npm does not work if you're using yarn if you're using yarn you really do need to have this separate uh, gcp build script so the information's kind of there, but it's not uh, not totally obvious. So uh, if you're using Yarn, you need to use the GCP uh, build script. So all that information is in there. It's just not really kind of gathered together in one place. And it's not really specific to the TypeScript uh, situation that we are um, that we're uh, doing here. OK, so that is it. I think that is everything we need to do. So we will just now go ahead and uh, deploy the function. And so you would use, I'm doing it from the command line. You can do it from the console. And so I'll just paste in the command for that. So the standard Google Cloud functions deploy uh, command. We identify the name of the function that we're using the Gen 2 um, version, which runtime we're using, Node.js region, source, entry point. Of course, that's uh, critical to match the name of the function that we wrote. Um, and in this case, triggered on HTTP and allowing all uh, requests in. So we'll go off and deploy it. And I'll just pause the video for a moment here because this might take a minute or two. Okay, and so the deployment has completed, and so I'm just going to return to uh, the Cloud Functions console, and I'll just refresh this because it's deployed now, and there is the function, and we can click on the function name, and there is a link to the endpoint for the function, and uh, hopefully it will run. There we go. So there is the uh, running function uh, deployed. I guess uh, the only other thing, one other thing I'll mention here is if you're using Git to manage the code for your project, the one other thing you might want to change is in the git ignore file, you may want to ignore the lib directory. <clears throat> so um, all the source code is contained in the source uh, directory. The lib directory has the compiled code, so that's not something you need to uh, track using Git. So in the Git ignore file, you might want to add the, uh, the lib directory there. Okay, that's it. I hope you found that useful for uh, deploying a TypeScript Google Cloud function using the Yarn uh, package manager. In the description, I'll put a link to the write-up of the instructions uh, in case you want to reference that.